Episodes of the Green Corn Rebellion show are sponsored by Oklahoma Progress Now. Oklahoma Progress Now is a 501c4 organization focused on building progressive power in Oklahoma. Their primary efforts are on developing progressive content for a 21st century audience, coalition, and capacity building across progressive organizations and causes, and working to see elected leaders who are more responsive to their constituents and the needs of the many. Areas of focus include progressive messaging and communications, coalition building and resource sharing, and focused progressive policy goals. You can check out their Twitch live streams, and they go uh, live on Facebook on at noon, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Please support this organization. It's a really great organization. It's just getting started here in Oklahoma. Uh, thank you. Now enjoy the rest of the video. Hello, this is the Green Corn Rebellion Show, and today I am here with uh, Fallon Bowman, who is the former guitarist for Canadian heavy metal band Kitty, and I am co-hosting with my friend Erica Gomez. How are y'all doing today? Hi, Erica. I'm well. Hi. <laughs> I'm I'm fangirly. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I'm just you know just. A regular person. <laughs> well, I'm actually not very regular. Yeah. <laughs> not, not normal anyways. So <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for having me guys. This is cool. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. It means yeah. a lot. Yeah. As, no worries. As someone who listened to Kitty when I was like in a little bit in high school, which is only a few years ago. So it was like way after y'all first came out. Oh, then, wow. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot. It's, yeah. That's super interesting to me because um, I, uh, I have a, a tw like a Twitch channel and I often get very like between six, maybe 15 and 17 year olds that mm -hmm. find my channel. And I, I have to be like, so sorry how did you find me and the, and they're like they're like oh yeah we really like your band i'm like yeah but you weren't even born when i was <laughs> like, <laughs> like i'm sorry i don't mean to be rude or anything but it's like how, how? are you sure you're in the right place like i don't understand but yeah. i it's increasing the amount of t and i'm like talking teenagers people that were born after afterwards yeah way 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 after um uh like finding me and I had mentioned that on another podcast that I was on and the, um, uh, his name is John. John's like, I think it has a lot to do with quite a few like SoundCloud rappers and people like listening to, had listened to new metal, like back in the day. And they reference the, like, you know, corn or reference like people, like mo most people wouldn't think that, that those two things would go together. And so then it kind of leads them on this little like you know like a journey through all these different kinds of bands and whatever and so like these younger from the younger generation are finding it that way and that to me is just like mind-blowing <laughs> like oh, yeah like God. for like for me like i'm 22 so like when i found out about kitty i was like 15 16 somewhere in there and it was because i was like 14 and i wanted to get into rock music and I didn't really know a whole lot of rock bands. Yeah. But I knew Linkin Park. So I got in Linkin Park about Hybrid Theory and found out they were new metal. I was like, okay, what's this new metal? What does thing? that mean? <laughs> and then I go down the rabbit hole of like corn and Limp Biscuit and stuff like that. And I was like, like in between the years of like 2012 and like 2016, I was first the only person I knew who listened to new metal. Yeah. And now I'm in college and I'm on Twitter and I see people who are like in high school right now talking about how corn and lead biscuit is like the best thing ever. I'm like, where were you when I was in high school? Like, what the heck? <laughs> where, I, like, I, I can't even think of one at my school, my mm -hmm. high school specifically was a massive, like a, a massive, massive school, like two, 3,000 students huge so there were a lot of like pockets of different people but people that specifically listen to metal and like heavy music we were like like this like very very small 
um, kind of hung out with like the drama club people because we were kind of adjacent, you know? Um, but that I, I can totally relate. Like, where were you? Like, really? Like, huh? So, yeah. Yeah. Although I wasn't in high school very long, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Erica wanted to plug a couple of things before we get started with the questions. And sure. she also had the first question to ask. So nice. Erica, go ahead and go off. <laughs> <laughs> I actually only have one thing to plug and it's my uh, shaved ice stand that's going to open this weekend. I'm super Yay! excited about it. I've been working really hard on it. Um, and it's really hot in there, so it work. <laughs> yeah. So come out, support. Yes. It is on the Northwest Expressway in Oklahoma City between Rockwell and MacArthur. So that was very my cool. <laughs> okay. I can't even say I've ever been to Oklahoma City, to be perfectly honest with you. So I have no You're idea where that is. But I, I would be there in a heartbeat if I, if I was there. So. Yes. You get free snow cones for life, so. <laughs> I'll support. If ever you Come on. Down. <laughs> cool. Right on. I wanted to know um, if you still talk to your old bandmates. I do. Uh, there was a period of time from the time that I left the band, which was in 2001, uh, for a very, very long time, we didn't talk to each other. And it was okay, I'm going to be dating myself a little bit, but we reconnected through MySpace. Um, I know. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Um, we connected through MySpace and that was how we kind of got talking to each other because of course me leaving the band and like a kind of the disintegration of the original, uh, lineup was, wasn't a great experience. So of course we needed some kind of time to like chill out. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we reconnected over there and then later on, um, we, we were friends on social media, um, like on Facebook and whatnot. And then also we have the documentary that came out. So that was something where we were talking fairly regularly. So yes, absolutely. Every, every single one of them really, um, in some good awesome. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool. Um, so my first question is, what was it like being a part of the whole new metal scene during that time whenever y'all first came out? Uh, crazy. And I'll tell you why. Because one of the interesting things about it was that we were not only playing the music, but we were also super huge fans of the music at the same time. So the people that were coming to our shows were people that were our age right? Like, or in some cases, even younger, which was to me also mind blowing people like 10 or 11 years old, like literal babies uh, being brought by their parents and whatnot. So we had this really interesting relationship with, uh, you know, being very much immersed and very much connected to the people that we were uh, playing for or, you know, writing music and, and, and um, consuming the music and whatnot. So, um, it was a trip because I'm like, I had these people on my wall or in my locker a year ago. And fuck, I still have them on my wall. So it's like, <laughs> like mm. um, yeah, it, absolute trip. And uh, just a blessing because fuck, like how many teenagers can say that that was their life? Even if it was only a part of my life, like when we had big success only for a couple of years, but what, what 15, 16 year old, maybe now <laughs> there are more 15, 16 year olds that have better lives than I had at that time. But for me, that was like the pinnacle of like, you know, getting to hang out with bands that I loved and, and went on and tour the world and stuff. So it was just incredible. What a, what a, what a ride. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. When did you first start playing the guitar? So I started playing, I think it would have been grade seven or seventh grade, as you guys say in the U.S. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was seventh grade. And I was, I, I, my parents were not super supportive of like me going into music. They, I come from like a pretty sporty family. So they were like, you know, do sports, it's better. <laughs> uh, but I was al always kind of a creative person. So that that was how I ended up, or the, the route that I ended up going. 
And I borrowed a guitar from a friend of mine. It was like a nylon string guitar that, you know, you like play like this, but I didn't do that. I was just like, I'm going to rock out. I'm going to learn corn on this fucking thing. So (laughs) there you go. And yeah, so that was, yeah, seventh grade. So how old are you then? Like 12. 12, 12, 13. Yeah. 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 We're the same age. So you know what I'm talking about. Like 95, 96 ish. 95 maybe I, I don't know whatever <laughs> we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that <laughs> did you have a favorite song that you liked playing when you learned or i was a like horribly obsessed i don't say horribly but like pretty obsessed uh with nirvana so i learned First, I learned Nirvana, and then once I get started getting into really heavy music, because when I first started getting into rock, it was more so like you know Green Day's Dookie came out in 1994, and so that was like the first record I had been given for my birthday or something. Somebody give sorry, it was a tape, not a CD. Uh, they'd given me it on tape, and Green Day's Insomniac came out a little bit later, so I was super into that kind of like I don't know what you would characterize Green Day as like. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah. yeah, so like that, and then like Alanis Morris, Alanis Morris. <laughs> I love that. I love that record too. This is great CanCon. Uh, yeah, and then so I just started getting into that kind of stuff. So it was more so Nirvana, Green Day, Hole, um, because yeah. there just were not just weren't a lot of female bands that I w- were ex- was exposed to maybe like L7 and Lunatics maybe but Hole was really the only one that I saw like women playing loud aggressive music um so a lot of that too yeah I think that was around the time when like Celebrity Skin came out yeah so. that would have been what like 96 97 90, or maybe even later but great record very yeah. underrated record, I think. Live Through This is great, don't get me wrong. But, like, it's very slick. It's a slick record, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, like, on the first Kitty album, y'all said you were influenced by several different bands. Um, like some of the bands kind of made sense to me, like Nile and Fear Factory and stuff like that. But you also said bands like Silverchair. Oh which, yeah. Which it's I was so which I was kinda like like whenever I listen to the first Kitty album, I don't think of like bands like Silverchair and <laughs> but like Silverchair is great. Like I like I like one song of theirs, but it's like, <laughs> but it's, but like I like the band. Like they, like they're a really good band. They're all and, right, you know. But like, uh, <laughs> but like I was, I was curious to know uh, what saw what, what was it? What was it? What am I trying to say here? It seems like a word salad. What I was, but I was curious to know what is the song or the album from them that you like or liked back then. Uh, because I couldn't really get past the one song, which is Tomorrow, because they play it all the time oh, on the see, radio. Oh, uh, you have to listen. Listen, <laughs> listen. Li- okay, Erica, back me up here. Okay, <laughs> so, if, okay, Frog Stomp is great. It's a good record, considering the fact that they were also super, super young when yeah, they wrote like every single song yeah. on that record. But Freak Show and Neon Ballroom, which are the, their second and third record, believe me when I tell you, it is fantastic. And one of the few records, I don't know about you, but very rarely do I ever listen to a CD, all the CD. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> dating myself. Very, very rarely do I listen to an album start to finish, but those two every time. And I think it's because we also had this uh kind of love affair also with with guys that instead of just screaming all the time there was a little bit of screaming but there's also a lot of the super melodic sweet and he has just such a emotional powerful voice that that's what drew us in the most and i think yeah on the kitty record we do have a lot of screaming 
but there were, was quite a lot of mm -hmm. uh, changes yeah. in terms of like melody and, and singing and, and, and all that. So yeah, I think, I know it's tough because yeah. Silver Chair and like Marilyn Manson too was a big one for us, which I've heard that I would say Marilyn Manson is new metal adjacent, which adjacent. I love that. I was like, <laughs> I like that. that that's good. Cause they're not new to, uh, at that time was not new metal at all. Yeah. <clears> like I consider Manson to be more like industrial metal. Yeah, because yeah. it's like, a lot more yeah. synths and yeah. programming and, and whatnot. So um, we were also huge into that, too. Yeah. How do you feel about the band Helvet? Do you know anything about them? Only that they covered a Bjork song. <laughs> 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 I really like Paige Hamilton. His style of guitar playing is really awesome. Yeah. But I can't say I've ever been like a huge fan. Mm -hmm. uh, Morgan really liked Helmet. I recall that that was she went to go see them and stuff and i'm like meh um <laughs> yeah. army of me is a great song <laughs> so yeah all right so i know you said that um your parents weren't really supportive of you being in the or going towards the whole music industry as a um instead of doing the sports thing but when you were touring and becoming famous were they okay with that because i know you were super young mm -hmm. and i'd imagine that they'd have to like sign off on that i don't know how that works <laughs> like yeah yeah go we don't care uh <laughs> the interesting thing is I, I do say that they weren't terribly supportive because I kept asking them for a guitar and they were like, no, because it's loud and then blah, blah, blah. Actually, first I really wanted to be a drummer, still kind of do, but uh, they wouldn't give me, they're like, no, no way. We're not buying you drums. Forget it. There's just not happening. So I would like, do you guys have the penny saver in the US? No, it's like a it, you know, like a classified magazine that. You know, yeah, 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 I think you know, do. Yeah, it's just, it's just like anyway. So people would put like you know drums we for sale for how many blah, blah blah. I would cut that out and like put it on the fridge just so they just so they remember. <laughs> uh, anyway, so fast forward to like nine. It was like my grade eight graduation uh, a concert. You know how they they get together. We sing songs and we're like, oh, we're graduating, big woohoo. Um, I played Holes Violet. And remember, I told you that I had gotten that guitar from my buddy, and that was the song that we had practiced on that crappy ass guitar. And I learned it. And then I borrowed an electric guitar from a friend of mine, because again, parents wouldn't buy it. So I played that song with, who is it? I can't even remember her name. She actually was one of like the first Kitty members, but then just never showed up for practice. So whatever. Um, <laughs> Who's laughing now? <laughs> so there you go. Uh, anyway, so we ended up playing that song, and my parents saw it, and they're like, "Oh wow, okay, you're not shitty at this." <laughs> thanks, thanks, mom. Thanks, dad. That's great. So they weren't supportive until that point, and they saw that I was really dedicated, and I really wanted to, you know, actually do this. So my dad went to Toronto, which was a bigger city, and he bought me a guitar. So I think from that point on, they were more supportive, but I mean, I come from a relatively big family, so they had just other priorities going on. And so then when I said, Hey, like this thing is kind of blowing up and things are, you know, doing really well, they were incredibly supportive at that point. They're like, yeah, yeah, go for it. And my dad, oh my God, my dad, <laughs> he would like fly to go to shows. Um, he kept a scrapbook that I still have of like every <laughs> single cool. magazine cut out uh newspapers everything like he was just so so proud and that was i was like well, we'll see <laughs> i'm not <laughs> shitty at things <sighs> but yeah no it was it was really they're very supportive and and amazing people really that's awesome my parents are like see i we never grew up with like rock in our house really not too too much so I wasn't sure exactly where I got like the heavy music thing and like just loved the more extreme, the better. <laughs> I was yeah. Like, yeah, it's awesome. So I couldn't, <laughs> just, couldn't understand where that came from because nobody in my family listens to that. Then one day I get into my dad's car 
And uh, my dad's a pretty, he's a military guy. So he's a pretty like chill, kind of low key dude. Get into the car and I'm like, oh my God, what, dad, what are you listening to? And he's like, Opeth. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's crazy. What is going on? You're like, you've never listened. And apparently he's, he is the metalhead, the low key metalhead. And I just didn't know. So he kept that a secret for a really long time. (laughs) But then again, I never really looked at his music collection and then it kind of made sense. I'm like, okay, well he has Black Sabbath. He has like a bunch of all these kind of prog rock bands that I'm like, I don't even know you like this kind of music, but okay. (laughs) So. That's funny. Um, So when you left the band, you said it was because you were unhappy with the way things were going with the band. Mm-hmm. Uh, was one of those things the cha- the musical change? Because the albums that were released afterwards were radically different sounding than the first one. Uh, definitely. There were uh, talks about, you know, sort of changing excuse me, changing things up a little bit. Um, I was and still am a pretty hardcore into uh, incorporating electronic elements and, and whatnot. Um, I'm a huge, in, like, and of course, my subsequent work after that has all been industrial stuff. So um, that was something that I was like, we should add more of that because that, to me, was what made a song like Brackish really great. If you take away all of the synthy things that we had put on top of it, it I mean, it's a pretty simple song otherwise. Yeah. But uh, adding all of those electronic, well, it was, yeah, it was like an electronic loop. Yeah. That's what made that song. But, you know, so there was a lot of back and forth about what we were going to do with Oracle and how that was going to come together. But um, I didn't really have... I, I just couldn't do it. I'm like, this isn't going to work, guys. We, we could, if we're going to write a record, we kind of need to agree on what we're going to do. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, so that was one of the reasons. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like, I, I remember, um, side note from this specific thing, but I was, um, I was listening to you when you did the POD cast with uh, yep. Brian, and you, I believe you said that disturbed opened for you guys like <laughs> way back in the year 2000 <laughs> yeah that that is so wild to hear about that because like, like and i also i left this this part out but one of the other bands that technically opened for us was nickelback oh god really <laughs> yeah that's insane <laughs> we were playing some like I don't know if in the U.S. you guys still do this, but at the time, playing a radio show was a really good way for you to, um, you know, a radio host really likes you and they'll put on a show and, and put on like a whatever. Anyways, this was the weird, this was somewhere in Massachusetts. It was bizarre. <laughs> the lineup was at us, I think going on, technically it wasn't headlining, but we were going on after a bunch of other bands. And there were still bands after us as well, I believe. Sky comes into our green room. He, he knocks. He's just like, hey, uh, sorry, I just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, we're Canadian too. And I'm like, oh, cool. Nice to meet you. My name's Fallon. Da, da, da. He's like, I'm Chad. I'm like, Chad. <laughs> nice to meet you, buddy. And he's just like, the nicest freaking guy. He's like, yeah, we're from Alberta. I'm like, Alberta, great. It's insane. Like, What's your band's name? And he's like, we're Nickelback. Nickelback. I've never heard of you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, and then the only time that we had heard about them again later on was when we have in Canada, we have our version of the Grammys, which is called the Juno Awards. And we were up for the same award that year and they won. So... We were, we, cause apparently the, the thing is if you win best new band, then it's kind of the kiss of death for your, for your band. Like you're just like, Oh, best new band. You're definitely, your career is done. Clearly that didn't happen for them. And then, you know, <laughs> this is the way it is, but we are all like eyeballing them. Like mm, we want to win, but it is what it is. But uh, yeah. Isn't that funny? That's insane. That's crazy. That's crazy. In my book. You guys won. Thank you. <laughs> I, I I feel like I, uh, you know, in, in, in my eyes, we won too. Yeah. You know, we may not have <laughs> written songs for Spider-Man, but still. <laughs> <laughs> 
anyways. Yeah. Not a huge Nickelback fan, but they've just, it just, their style just wasn't yeah. aligned with mine, I guess. I like their hit songs. Like, I'll defend all their hits. I don't know about the rest of the discography, but I'll, I'll defend their hits. I'll defend Remember. Hero to the day I die. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But I mean, they're not terrible. They're not terrible. They're just like kind of dad rock, in my opinion. You know, like dad's like, yeah, this is like hard rock, man. Is it though? But I mean, I don't hate them. They were very nice guys, it's like really nice people. So mm-hmm. can't fault them for that, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever get it- to meet the guys in Lump Biscuit ever? Did your paths ever cross? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good qu- I don't think so. Although I did dress up for, oh yeah, <gasps> uh, we had to play a Halloween show somewhere in the south, and I dressed up like Fred Durst. <laughs> I was like, I was wearing like the hat that you're wearing. Yeah, do like a little like little beard here, and then I oh, drew God. terrible tattoos, <laughs> and like I had the the the. Uh, the khaki dicky pants, shell toes. <laughs> Everybody knew who I was. I'm like, who am I? And they're like, Fred I'm like, yeah, buddy, that's me. So uh, I can't say I've ever met him, but I've definitely cosplayed him. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. But yeah, like, you're- only, <laughs> but- only like only like half of anybody who sees me gets it. Like the other half of people just think I'm just a Yankees fan or whatever. Like, right? I don't follow right? baseball You're at like, all, Listen. but I know who Fred Durst is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Or like, cause when I was, we were teenagers too, we would dress up like early. Remember like, um, when corn first came out, like Jonathan Davis's thing was wearing the like full head to toe, adidas track suits and they were sequenced and they were like they looked amazing that was also on major rotation and i find it so interesting that it's now a big thing like people are like i'm i'm fucking wearing it right now see <laughs> <laughs> like it's become a big thing again i'm like hey we used to do that and it was sequence <laughs> so anyway <laughs> no, that was just something that we did back in the day because um, I was huge, huge uh, System of a Down fan, and they wore Pumas all the time, and ah. so we would wear Pumas all the time because totally we did it. So yeah, uh, I mean, I, I wonder how much money Corn uh, <laughs> made for Adidas in that just like just because we that yeah. was all we did like Adidas everything Adidas we called it sports goth. Because we would wear like really, really huge spikes or like like gauntlets and stuff, but mixed with sports attire, which is very it's very specific. I'm waiting for it to come back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So anyways, enough on that. Enough on that one. Erica, it's your turn to ask a question. Um, I actually had a question not about music. It's more or less, I've been looking at your page lately, um, and I see that you are very much um, into, like, advocacy work. Yeah. And I didn't know if you knew everything that was going on here, but I wanted to know if you knew about, you know, the things that we're dealing with in the u.s and also if you guys have the same like issues with people of color in canada oh certainly and i would say i was having this conversation actually with uh, some girlfriends of mine um the interesting and awful thing at the same time is that in the u.s racists are not subversive with their racism they will tell you or they'll make it make it kind of clear that they're a bigot. Whereas in Canada, people are are more polite about it, which I think is even more insidious. That like, there's just like this, the bubbles under the surface and they're very good at at kind of hiding it. Um, In in a way, I'd rather just have them out themselves so I can just know. (laughs) 
Right. Um, you know, people do that here too. Cause I mean, I moderate this group and that's basically all we talk about. And um, I live in kind of a little town where it's like low key. They say certain things, but if you point it out, then you're the one that's race baiting. Yeah. Um, oh, you gotta take that card now when you're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, it's really yeah. annoying because I'd, I'd respect people more if they just came out and s- just say what you're wanting to say. Thank you. And then I know not <laughs> who not to go with. But, Thank you. Yeah. And it's funny. Uh, I mean, it's not funny, but um, we're very much aware of it here. Very much aware of it. We have our, and it drives me crazy that once all this stuff started popping off, Oh, well, we don't have that problem really here in Canada. I'm like, bitch, yes, we do. Do not. Okay. Do not. And it's not even just your, you know, black indigenous, um, uh, people of color. We have our own ingrained t- like systemic issues as well. And it just drives me mm. so crazy when people downplay it. So yes, we're very much aware we're very much there i think in a lot of ways um uh our indigenous population in canada especially uh and not a lot of people know about it but we just have done such a disservice and such awful awful things and it was like almost like codified codified uh, racism against uh, our indigenous population so it's like Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to answer your question, yes, very much aware, um, very much there. And I always, oh man, this is the thing that has been the most eye-opening for me is I, with my subsequent work, the other um, music that I've done has been at its core quite political, but I don't think people got that message. Um, so me coming out and, and saying, you know, these are issues that if you're in the U.S., they pertain to you. You need to care about it. It's not just, I'm, if I'm, okay, I'm going to post a pic about a cat and just forget about it because it's, it's fucking happening and people are dying. Okay, so it's happening. Do you know how much hate I got from people? I can't believe you're making this political. And I got like emails or, or like messages from people like, how are you, why are you making this about race? I didn't know that you were so political. I'm like, you have not been listening at all, have you? <laughs> so yeah, I find that interesting, but also great because now you've outed yourself. I can block you. <laughs> yeah. Get out. Great. So <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, it's uh, an absolutely insane um, situation, but fucking long time coming. Let's seriously. Um, yeah. Anyways, no, rant the over. Music, <laughs> with the music thing, it's crazy because I think that me and Greg were talking about it the other day because I've been like posting rage songs or like system songs and they're oh, God. so old, but they are so relevant right now. Yeah. And we were just talking about how these songs were before their time, but not really. This has just been going on for so long that it's relevant still now. So it's ridiculous, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Did you see some of the people that, I mean, I followed Tom Morello for a very long time, but um, you know, him posting things uh, with uh, like related to the BLM movement related to just you know, world issues and whatnot. And then like the first comment from people, you know, I liked you better when you weren't political. I'm like, have you ever listened? To- <laughs> do you- what, what machine do you think they were raging against? <laughs> Dishwasher? <laughs> like, were these people, I, I can't, I just can't, I can't. And then, or, you know, when, since when did you get political? Uh, I have a political science degree from Harvard. <laughs> right, so, right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, it's eye-opening, absolutely. 
So uh, another question I have here is, what all have you been doing since you left the band? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> loaded <laughs> uh i went back to high school actually after went to a, a performing arts focused kind of uh program where i did musical theater and stuff like that to really just gain my confidence back i think because i think after leaving the band i was pretty depressed and like not knowing and directionless rudderless really i didn't know what the fuck i was gonna do so i went back to school i got my diploma. Um, then I did a bachelor's degree um, at the University of Western Ontario in classical studies, which is weird. <laughs> but anyways, it was just a, a, a thing that I was very interested in. I still am. Uh, and I lived overseas for a while. Uh, I released three records, uh, the last one in 2011, and I'm working on it one uh, right now as well. And I went also to do a master's degree in ar Roman archaeology. So if you need me to dig up anything, I can do that. Um, <laughs> other than that, the yeah, just now I'm acting. So yeah, that's it. Cool. And then in, in a in a very very small nutshell, that's what I'm doing. That's cool. Yeah. So it's been it's been a ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah cool so i um in that interview that you did um that greg mentioned earlier you mentioned something about your love for chino so <laughs> when did that start <laughs> god i think the first time i ever saw him in the board video 97 yeah, it was like 95 mm -hmm. for around, yeah. Yeah, it was the first time I had seen it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, ooh, <laughs> there's a thirst trap if you haven't seen it. <laughs> uh, he, he, and I, uh, I, I have some pretty, like, embarrassing stories of people, you know, telling him. Like, oh, no. He has a really big crush on her. You, you should see something. He's like, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll go over and he t Oh my god, it was on my birthday. It was, it was so traumatizing, knowing that you're like a guy that you used to have again in your locker or on your bedroom wall or whatever. He's coming over to you, shaking your hand, being like, "Happy birthday, how are you?" And I'm like, <laughs> and he asked me about David Blaine. It was magic, literally. <laughs> it was just like. Oh my god. What is what is this conversation right now? <laughs> but yes, so that's it started a long time ago and it's still going strong. I'd no, imagine. No, no disrespect, Chino, I love you. Uh platonically. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. That's all. <laughs> so Wait, 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 wait. Did you share this too? Do you understand where it comes? Like, yes, I, I, no. You, yes. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> I don't feel so alone. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I couldn't imagine. Like, how was it being around all of these people that you... Because I don't think that I could ever talk. Like, I would never be able to communicate words around people that I grew up, like... Like, I like Yes. Right? I mean, it's weird, and you also can run into the issue that once you meet them and they turn out to be terrible people, that is also just, like, soul-crushing. So it was so, excuse me, refreshing to meet him, and he was just lovely, super nice, super, super chill. All of the guys in the Deaf Friends were like that. Um, and then, like, I didn't know who... <laughs> I didn't know who Slipknot was before we started talking <laughs> with them. <laughs> so, wow. yeah, I didn't know who they were. I, they were brand new to me, basically. Um, but they were also just amazing people. Really? But there are definitely, and I won't name names, but there are definitely people that I loved prior to meeting them that once I met them, I'm like, you are terrible. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my God. Just awful. Um, so it was definitely a trip, but also there's a downside to that too, of course. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, 
And <laughs> also being young, like very, very young and a female in that environment, like there are some, there were definitely people that were like big brother types, like that would wanted to like shield you from the really terrible people. And then there were ones that were very disgusting and predatory that existed too. Um, but yeah, like it, it, it definitely, yeah, it was kind of interesting. <laughs> so, uh, who is your favorite band to tour with or to play with hmm. in any setting? Tour with, I think that the best tour was Ozfest, just because it had all of these amazing bands in one place. I was a huge Soulfly fan and we opened for them. So that was awesome to get to see them um, every night uh, or every afternoon rather. And um, Pantera was on that tour as well. And oh God, I love them. Uh, and, but I would say that the, the favorite band to play with would have been uh, Slipknot, of course. Getting to see them play and they were such talented guys playing in this really tiny, you know, uh, venue somewhere before they blew up. I mean, they were big already, but like before they really blew up uh, was such an honor to get to see them play every night because the ferocity and the aggression and the like energy was just electric. Like every night they were never not on like on they were never 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 uh not a treat like to watch they were just incredible so yeah definitely also has best tour but best bands play with slipknot i've gotten to see slipknot live and they put on a really great show greg was supposed to see slipknot this year and covid ruined it for him so. oh i'm so not slipknot i wasn't gonna see slipknot they were it's good to see who was I going to see? There was a handful of bands I was going to see. I was going to see In This Moment. I was going to see... We were going to see Sepultura together. We and, were going to see Sepultura. Yeah. But and Slipknot going to be at Cat Fest too. At Cat Fest? I don't know about Cat Fest. I don't know if they released the... Um, the yeah, they were going to be there. Were. Well, if they were, I would have gone to see them. But, <laughs> yeah, you know, but. <laughs> but either way, but you know, like I was gonna see, I was gonna see a handful of bands before this whole thing happened. This is gonna be a pretty lit year, like mm -hmm. for like, cause I was waiting to see what was gonna happen because I wanted to buy VIP tickets to the Deftones, <laughs> but uh, that got can't well rescheduled. They say rescheduled, yeah. but I had a whole list of bands that I wanted to see. I wanted to see Kraftwerk. I wanted to see. I have it somewhere. <laughs> I have a list. Now that I have to rebuy everything, which is annoying, or not rebuy, um, everything has to be rescheduled. So dumb. Stupid COVID. Anyway, I don't think it doesn't really matter. But still, so many great bands playing this year, and now, now what? Are we ever no. going to see? It? Oh yeah, Kraftwerk, Deftones, New Order, Pet Shop Boys, Purity Ring. Uh, Ein Susanne Neubauten, Rammstein, and Jonah Matranga. Those were the ones that I wanted to see. But no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, yeah it's I think all of ours got rescheduled for 2021. Yeah. Right? Uh, or some of them canceled out, right? Yeah, like I think one that I was going to go to was just rescheduled for like October this year. And I'm probably not going to go to it if they go ahead and put it on. But yeah, most of them I know got rescheduled or are going to be postponed for later. Mm. So, yeah, like I was going to see ICP. And I was really excited for that one. Yes. And, <laughs> and then they had to, you know, reschedule that one. So, I don't mm. know. Yeah. That's but, great. Um, it sucks. I hope it returns to normal soon because yeah. it probably won't, though. <laughs> let's let's yeah. be real. <laughs> yeah. But um, I was like, two questions other than the one that I have here, but uh, <laughs> favorite Corn album and favorite Pantera album. Good one. Uh, okay, Corn album. Oh man, that's a good one. Because I, uh, I judge whether I love a, a record if I can listen to it from beginning to end and, and feel 
go through the feels with every single song. And I feel like their debut album was the top one for me that I can still do that to this day. I can listen to that one start to finish if I'm in the mood for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I would say their first album. And then for Pantera, I love reinventing the steel. That was like, for me, even though it was like one of their later records, Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really get into them until much later. Yeah. Like when we toured with them. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, was, I, didn't, I just wasn't a huge fan of theirs but then seeing them live mm-hmm. and like you know meeting them and getting to know them and whatnot and then I was just like oh wow you guys are really good <laughs> yeah like for me like Korn's like my third favorite band so like I like most of their albums so like my favorite one is always gonna be Follow the Leader because that, that one too is it the first one like, you heard or yeah it was the first one I heard yeah. like it was the first one I bought because it was the one I had known, you know, Freak on a Leash with. And then, like, I remember looking at the track listing on, like, Wikipedia. And it was like, yeah. there's Ice Cube on here. And, like, yeah. there's also Fred Durst of Lip Biscuit. Like, oh, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta check this out. And, yeah, but Fall of the Leader is always been my favorite. But I think my second favorite of theirs is probably their self-titled debut. Yeah. I would, um, I, I would actually agree, but in the reverse. So yeah. the, the second one would be Follow Leader for me. I love Life is Peachy too. Yeah, but, me too. I mean, Follow Leader for me, I think was one of those records that being the third baby of, of all of theirs uh, didn't get the recognition I think it had deserved because mm-hmm. I didn't like issues or anything past issues. Oh, really? You didn't it. like issues? Wow. Nope. nope. God. <laughs> that's interesting I just, yeah I, I, I think you know what i think it is i think it's just because my my musical style changed that i was into like i just wasn't listening i was listening to pretty much exclusively industrial music so i wasn't really interested in i heard issues i was like meh not interested sorry <laughs> no, that's so weird because like usually when i talk to people about like corn albums they are they're always like oh issues is like their best or second best so like no man like it's at least five <laughs> or something like it's not it's not as it's, great it's as there possible. yeah like and then um i like corn's dubstep album that they put out like 10 years ago and like not a lot of sorry people yes <laughs> corn's dubstep album path of totality i think is what it's called like i really liked it and a lot of people are looking weird like how do you like that or, like it's interesting like it's difficult i mean i I I different yeah Yeah. i applaud them for taking the i mean it's kind of a risk really if you're doing something like that uh metalheads i think sometimes can be very myopic so they're just like it's not heavy i can't listen to it but that's the thing like it is heavy though can't do that like it it is heavy it's like it's it's in its own way though yeah yeah like it's it's like a perfect mixture of like like the ha- the breakdowns on that album are like way better than like most like new metal breakdowns from other bands. Yeah, like it's, yeah, it's pretty epic. But no, but with Pantera, on the other hand, I only really like one album of theirs, and uh-huh. it's Display of Vol- oh, like, Vulgar Display. Oh, yeah. Vulgar Display. Okay, so, yeah. But I like, mean, like yeah. I like a couple of songs. Like I like like two or three songs on Cowboys from Hell. And then I like like maybe four songs on the album after uh, the like, Far Beyond Driven. Yes, like I like about four or five of those songs. I didn't really yeah. like the whole album. And then the other two albums after, I didn't like those at all. Which is always weird whenever I hear interesting. Like, which is always weird when I hear people say like, "Oh no, Southern Trend Kill is basically their best album." I'm like, I don't know about that one, but. Okay. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I I don't know if you know, but I did um a podcast with the guy uh where we broke down every single Deftones album. Oh yeah. And <laughs> I'll I'll send you the link. So we we broke down and we're gonna do another one when the when their new record comes out. So we had wildly different opinions on on you know which was the best and which because it's so subjective yeah right what 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 makes it the best what makes it is it because it you heard a particular song at a particular point in your life so it spoke to you and that's why it's the best for you um and in his case that's exactly what happened he's like i heard it when something had happened to me and blah 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 and so i always associated that self deftone self-title was the best record ever i was like that's a good one 
what? <laughs> no, <laughs> because I had the complete opposite. Uh, this, I mean, the same sort of situation, but the complete opposite opinion because mm. I had heard their first record first oh, and yeah. gone through the journey. And now I have white pony tattooed on my arm. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, I think white pony was my favorite though. Yeah, I mean, like... and I love Deftones, but I love White Pony because it's like nostalgia from from 2000, right? <laughs> yes. Great like year. My like my opinions on Deftones, like they're also one of my favorite bands. So like, I think I think I prefer like the older Deftones, like the first three albums. But I think their best album is Gore. And I've oh. never met, like, I've never met anyone who's held, held that opinion. Like, to me, Gore is just, like, amazing all the way through. Like, it's... it's so not even Koino Yoken? Mm -mm. really? Like, that one, like, I think, <laughs> like, to me, I think, like, the weaker Deftones albums are the first ones. Like, I think White Pony is probably, like, the best of the first three. Okay. <laughs> but like the like if I were to if someone were to ask me what's the worst Deftones album, I'd probably say Saturday Night Wrist. Probably I agree. that one. But like I agree. but I think like right above it is like adrenaline. <laughs> so like but like Okay, I'm gonna send it to you because I think you and John are very much on the same wavelength, mm -hmm. right? Um we universally didn't like gore um as again as a record because it was something i was not terribly familiar with it because it literally had just come out that year mm -hmm. um and we had just kind of come off of a high of seeing them play that year and they were playing only stuff from koino yokan and earlier yeah. so they were playing they're like oh, oh my god they were, oh, they were fucking fantastic uh i may have cried uh, <laughs> and i've seen them like four times but five times but yeah, that's very, very interesting. I'm going to send it to you because I think you will have s similar opinions. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, oh, and also another opinion I have about White Pony is like my favorite song on White Pony is, is Back to School. So like, and I've not met a lot of people who even like that song. And I'm like, I love that song. I love the video. I love the song. I like that Chino's rapping because, like, that's my mm. other thing. It's like I like it when uh. Chino raps. Mm. He's, like, he's good. Like, he's actually good. He's pretty slow. Yeah, he's like he's, yeah. he's not bad at it. That's the reason why, like, anytime, like, Wicked, for example. Yes. They, yes yeah. Wicked. Like. Yeah. Yeah. They asked him to do it and not Jonathan Davis. <laughs> 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 he was, like so bad. Like, yeah. <laughs> not good. He's he's very good at, at that. Um, yeah. That's interesting. For most people I, that I've talked to, the, their favorite song is either going to be na uh, Knife Party or Passenger. Um, uh, I didn't even oh, like Passenger, honestly. I Why? I no, I, no, I, I never, I, I know, but like I never. Explain yourself, Greg. <laughs> I never liked that song. Like on White Pony, like I think outside of like Back to School, I like most of the songs. There's just like, three songs on there i just don't really like that much at all it's passenger pink maggot and what's the one after knife party there's one after knife party right i don't know but like there's like three songs in there i never really liked at all but like all the other ones i really liked it's like digital bath and teenagers probably my favorite deftone song of all time so interesting yeah. not even korea no, that's the one I didn't really like that much. Okay, no. yeah, yeah, interesting. Isn't yeah. that funny though? Because every single person that I've talked to that who are Deftones fans have one like real curveball, and they're like, "Man, I love this song. This song really speaks to me." I'm like what? Really? <laughs> but again, it's this. You've got this emotional connection to this song for whatever reason that maybe you can't even articulate, and. That is what I love about the Deftones because every single person has a different take on it. And it's, it's endlessly fascinating to me to talk to people about it. Um, so I could talk about them all day. <laughs> uh, but the, the last question I had was what kind of music are you listening to nowadays? Ooh, nowadays uh, a lot of house music. Now hear me out. So, um, there was a period of time where I was getting pretty heavy into like uh, Aphex Twin, 
uh, mm-hmm. square pusher, like very, there was some kind of really ambient tracks that I was really getting into because when I was writing my uh, master's dissertation, that was all I could listen to because I couldn't listen to anything with hardcore screaming or like lyrics or anything. I just needed droning, like do, 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 do music because it really helped me. So that from that, I kind of got on that wavelength of just listening to a lot of ambient and then I started getting into like Chicago house music and you know just regular <laughs> regular house music from the UK too like bands like Disclosure or um oh my god they're so fucking good <laughs> so amazing uh so a lot of ele- pretty much pretty much exclusively electronic music but every now and then I will throw on like a, a metal record or something it's still in my heart but see that's crazy along when I was getting into like the metal scene I was also getting really big into raves because we would have like raves here and so I listened to electronic music like back in the day too totally. and so I, I switch all the time I'm you volley crazy. between the two it's like okay I like I like uh like heavy music hard music but then this is my jam. Like if I'm ever doing something, if I'm like baking or cooking or anything, like I will put on, um, I don't know, you know, any, any house music that even, and even like a Spotify mix, I will pretty much enjoy every single song. Um, but yeah, that's exclusively what I'm listening to. But in terms of like new releases, I can't even, I can't even tell you like purity ring. Uh, I'm listening to a lot of them. Um, because again, they were coming to tour here, and then of course, that's not happening. Uh, the NV Nation, like a lot of EBM industrial music, even though the record is now almost a year old, but oh my god, behind the Deftones, no, I would say mm, they're tied for first. The NV Nation and the Deftones are two of my like favorite groups of all time, and yeah, that's the long answer. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Erica, do you have any more questions? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm well, still this... all like, fingerly, <laughs> and we have what? stuff in common. She's my new best friend. Girl, so. yeah. <laughs> Girl, yeah. No, there's um, and and that again goes back to that whole thing that like most of the people that were coming to see us or were fans of us are very, very similar and had, you know, similar upbringings or in some cases, you know, I mean, metal is a pretty heterog- or, um, hom- homogenous group of people. You know what I mean? So it was like, there weren't many people that looked like me or, you know, had my same upbringing, but yeah. it is so crazy to me that on an international women's day i think it was two years ago something like that i get tagged in something by someone that i don't know who they were i'm like who is this and so like, i just wanted to say that in 2000 i went to go see this band and, and you know how cool is it that i saw like a girl that looked like me that was also into like metal or into like heavy music and I'm like, I don't know who this is. So they look her up and she's like this like massive rapper. And I'm like, I don't know who she is, but like, <laughs> that's so fucking cool to me. And then I checked out her music and her music is awesome. And I'm like, geez, that's so fucking awesome. That's so cool. So then I like added her and I said, no, thank you. That's so, so nice of you. And she's just like, you're awesome, girl. <laughs> that's so cool. Thank you. Yeah, but, that was kind of a thing growing up too, like you. I remember moving schools and so I had to go to a school with like all new people that I didn't know before. Nobody knew me. And there was another girl that was black like me. And she was like, you can't, you can't dress like that because there can only be one black goth in this school. And I was like, (laughs) (laughs) listen, I've got the market cornered on black goths. Okay. (laughs) Like what? I think one of the most validating things for me anyways, was to see the craft. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. To see the craft and being like, you know, uh, Rachel true, uh, like 
a badass black goth witch. Like that was so cool to me because that never, I'd never seen that before. And I'm like, that's me. I'm one of those. <laughs> but uh, maybe not so much the witch part, but maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's definitely validating, right? You're just like, okay, well, I'm not alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like for me, when I was in high school, like I knew like a cu- like a couple of other like black kids who were also into like heavy music. They weren't like into the same bands as me, mm. so like we didn't necessarily gel that well together. But like you know, like they we we so knew. So what each did other. they listen to? They were like into emo. Yeah, like oh. there was like because like kids like my age, whenever we were like in high school and stuff, they listened to like Sleeping with Sirens and stuff like that. And I just, ugh, even as an adult, I still can't stand stuff uh, like that. But yeah. like, but like you know. But then when I got older, and started getting into like more heavy metal and stuff like that, because like when I was like in high school, I was like, I mean, I liked some other like metal genres and stuff like that but i i was mostly focused on like new metal so i was like Mm. ah let's buy all the corn albums let's buy all the limbiscuit albums and then as i got older i started getting into other bands that had like black people as their singers like butcher babies (laughs) like i became a huge butcher babies fan over the last year or so and i wasn't like a huge butcher babies fan in high school like i knew who they were but like i would didn't really listen to them because it was like, oh, they weren't new metal. But then, like, learning that, like, they're influenced by new metal, it was like, oh, that's, that's actually that makes sense. Kind of cool. And, yeah. you know, and Carla Harvey, she follows me on Twitter now, which is even weirder. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> but, like, you know, like, um, and who else? Tommy Vex of Bad Wolves. I'm a huge Bad yep. Wolves fan now. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, it's it's been interesting and then uh, what's his name sky accord from the band issues he's the basis like i got to meet do a meet and greet with them last year nice and he and it was so cool getting to meet them because like he remembered me from twitter because like i think i asked him to come on my show and he's like oh you're that guy that has that show oh my like, oh yeah uh, <laughs> uh, yeah that's me oh, uh-huh. <laughs> but like yeah it's it's cool and then there's People like, uh, I can't remember his name, the guy, lead singer from Fever 333. He's, he's a black guy. And it's cool seeing these, these like learning more about these people because a lot of these people have existed for a long time. It's, it's, that's the thing. Attention. Yeah. That's the thing. I had posted, somebody had put together an entire thread on Twitter. Yeah, I saw that. About, thread, yeah. Right? Like, look at all these bands. These bands have not just come up in the last two years. They've been around they've for fucking forever. ever. Yeah. And, okay, another thing I learned. Did you know that Angola in Africa mm-hmm. has a burgeoning black metal scene? Did you know that? I didn't I know, know that. that. I didn't know that. I, I, somebody had just like, you need to read this. And it was this, I mean, it's very small. There's maybe like four bands. Yeah. But the fact that a music style that existed, that arguably got its start in Bergen, Norway, ended up all the way in Africa yeah. And now there's like this like scene that's going on is fucking wild to me. I love that. But it's been it's it's existed for a while. That's mm-hmm. so interesting now that it, you know people are starting to notice it. It's like okay, well, it guys, it's nothing new. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, like the the thread. people like Lejean Witherspoon yes. and Derek Green have existed mm-hmm. for a long Forever. time. People like yeah. come on. Like this isn't new. Mm-hmm. Like I think like I always say like when it comes to like seven dust like those guys are like so they're amazing good. and like they're they're like they're actually like a low-key pretty influential band for like a lot of like metal core bands of like the last 10 or 15 years and people mm-hmm. don't like think about that i'm like yeah like how like you just think that those bands sounded like that out of thin air like no <laughs> go listen to old like go listen to home like the album home by seven dust we toured That's, with them. They were our second, yeah. second uh, tour. Uh, sorry, third tour ever was with them. Oh wow! That's and, amazing. Oh my god! Every, again, every night, Lejean can. He is the voice of a fucking angel, mm-hmm. first of all, and uh, they ne- all. I ooh, yeah, maybe I need to take back that Slipknot one. It, just because I mean, <laughs> Slipknot is amazing and and great, but like the amount of energy, the energy was different with them. I would say. 
uh, sorry, with, with seven dust, they had a, a like a really a p- almost positive and not saying that, sorry, this is coming out wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, just a, they just had a different message and a different like approach i guess and he was all, like pitch perfect like the guy never sounded bad i'm like how how do you you're so amazing you're such an and he was so sweet the nicest person ever um so yeah like really do you really think that a band that influential just yeah like, huh? <laughs> yeah they're they're amazing like they they don't get the credit they deserve I 100% they're, agree. 100%. They're just great. And then yeah. uh, who else is some a uh, band I was thinking of? Uh, I know who you're thinking of, and I can't. I can't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it's great that there's so many, and then yeah. you know, yeah, I should retweet that actually. And keep yeah. adding because people were just adding more and they're like oh you didn't know about so and so so and so and so and so i'm like mm-hmm. because like in some of the bands they're like they're not the front they're not the front person they're like the bassist or mm-hmm. the drummer or something like i think in in the band of mirror like their newest guitarist yep. i mean he's been in the band for a few years now but he's black mm-hmm. uh and um some of these other bands um but yeah like it's it's interesting and, and it's funny because I always like people always say it like I was called white in high school because I listened to metal and I was like no like we actually started rock music so like hello and I listened to mostly rock music that's like mixed with rap music so by your weird logic I'm actually more blacker than you think so <laughs> exactly <laughs> like <laughs> like it was it was interesting but. But that's just, yeah. I hate that though, you know, like know. you can't. Why, why <laughs> is it that a particular race owns music though, really? And, right. and, and then to call you that is, are you, are you trying to make, is it derogatory? Are you saying that like, you shouldn't do that? You shouldn't yeah. listen to that kind of music? Uh, sorry, no, don't tell me what kind of music I can listen to. I can listen to whatever the fuck I want. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Like, in, and back then, I didn't have, like, the long mental list of, like, Black people in metal bands that I yeah. knew. Like, I mean, like, I knew a couple. Because Seven Dust is a new metal band, so of course I knew mm-hmm. them. Sure. You know, and I knew Kitty, and then I knew, you know, a handful of other bands, but, like, I didn't, you know, like, now I'm just like, oh, I can name about, like, 20 different people. Yeah, right? yeah. To rebuff that, but, Yeah. But yeah, of course, if you didn't, yeah. like, if people, people just don't know, and then you're like, okay, let me just educate you, yeah. okay, <laughs> that uh, you're wrong, and I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very, it's, it's uplifting that there's, you know, that there's still a, a lot for people to learn, really, that there's just so much great music being done by, the, out there that you're just like, it's, it's, it's mind, mind-blowing really but i would argue though um there's still a significant lack of females doing this kind of music um and they're not even talking about women of color like in general yeah it's just like there just isn't Mm -hmm. as many um then there should be more but you know oh yeah like like one of my favorite bands is lacuna coil Mm-hmm. which I feel like is super underrated band, especially here in America. Yeah. And um, who else is there? There's Lizzie Hale of Hailstorm. Yep. She's great. And then uh, Maria Brink. I think she's amazing too. Mm-hmm. Um, like as far as in this moment goes, like I'm not like a huge fan of in this moment, but I bought their album Black Widow in 2014, mm-hmm. 2015. And I bought it only thinking I would like a couple of the songs. So I wasn't even sure why I bought it because usually I don't buy CDs. I think I'm only like, going to like a couple of songs. I love the whole entire album. I was yeah. blown away. Yeah. And blown away by the Sex Metal Barbie music video. She directed it and it was amazing music video. I was like, wow. like I, That's, that's I can, incredible. Yeah. Like there's a lot of great, you know, women in heavy metal and rock music that like I find influential to myself even if I'm not like a huge fan of like their music but like Mm. them to do what they're doing it's just like great to see totally doing well at it and crushing it yeah yeah. and I mean it's it's still I think overwhelmingly 
male dominated, but oh, yeah. um, it's, it's, it's getting there. <laughs> so that's yeah. not going to happen overnight. But like yeah. the only person that I remember is seeing like um, skin from Skunk and Nancy. That's the only woman that I remember, woman of color that I remember seeing, like a black woman in, as a front person mm-hmm. to a, like a heavier band. I wouldn't say Skunk and Nancy's really like super heavy, but like that was the only time. Yeah. She's like, okay, well, that's kind of cool. And she's, um, oh my God, amazing. Her and Lejean did a song together. Yes. Magic. I remember it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't think of what it, what it's called, but it's on the home it's album. On, it's yeah. on home, yeah. 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 So, it's, yeah. so good. So, so good. But yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, well, this has been a really great talk. Uh, yeah. Like, this is probably... It's it's been really great. Uh, yeah, Erica, are you still there? Okay, well, ooh, okay, there I'm here. Go. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, um, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, thank you, Fallon, for coming on. It thank you, lot. guys. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Erica. Thanks, Greg. It was <laughs> lovely to meet you. Love you. Lovely to shoot the shit. Yeah, and all that stuff. So I I always love talking to people that are like well-versed in music especially new metal stuff because it's fun to talk about we go down memory lane and all that yeah it's real fun especially yeah. someone who was a part of it like that right. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> i guess so <laughs> yeah. that's true yeah cool yeah. well have yep. a good guy- evening guys you too yeah you too. we'll see you i'm sure i'll see you around hopefully <laughs> awesome Bye. Bye. Bye.